All right, so this is problem 3.15 out of Griffiths. And uh, I'm going to go decently in depth into it just so we can try to understand this as best as possible. That way I don't have to do a million of these examples. So it says, a rectangular pipe running parallel to the z-axis from negative infinity to positive infinity has three grounded metal sides. Y equals zero, Y equals A, X equals zero. So when it says it's grounded, that just means the potential is zero. And at X equals B, it has a specific potential. So part A wants us to find a general equation, and B wants us to find explicitly when that potential is a constant. So to do these, I mean, you could obviously see it's chapter three. We're not going to use chapter three. We're going to use chapter three methods. But um, unfortunately, there's not many ways to solve this other than to use Laplacian. We've looked at the E field. We've looked at method of imaging. We've looked at finding the potential um, systematically. So the way that we're going to solve these when we have these boundary conditions is going to be solving Laplacian's equation. This is, this is that. So it's going to be a little math heavy, but I'm going to try to be very detailed about it so I don't have to do a bunch of these problems. So let's start with the boundary conditions. We have the potential is equal to zero when y is equal to zero. We have the potential is equal to zero when y equals a. The potential is equal to zero when x equals zero. And the potential is some general this when x equals b. Okay. So those are the boundary conditions that we're given. They're in the problem. There's not too much to that. So again, we're going to solve the Laplacian. That's how we're going to find the potential here. And all this is... This is obviously going to be in Cartesian coordinates with our x's and y's. So this will be as followed. This is just explicitly writing out what the Laplacian tells us. Now what we're going to do is the method of separation of variables, which tells us that our potential as a function of x and y can be separated as such. So that's why they call it separation of variable. Basically, you have your x's together, your y's together. Uh, and if you were to take the, you would have v as a function of y, d squared x, dx squared plus v as a function of x, d squared y, dy squared equals zero. And if you divide it out by v, in other words, if you divide it by vx, vy, you'll get 1 over vx, d squared x, plus 1 over vy. This is a little redundant. Um, not necessarily redundant, but you don't necessarily have to work through all these to see what's happening. And you separate, basically what we're doing now is these partial differential equations become ordinary differential equations. So kind of nice, makes it easier to solve. And the solution for this, for the x component, we're gonna use exponentials. So this is the exponential solution for the x direction, okay? And then times v sub y, that's going to be our trigonometric functions. Okay. So again, we have our Laplacian and we set up our boundary conditions. There's a little bit more to this. If you wanted to, you could say, for example, I guess this is an ordinary differential equation. So now we can call this K1x. And then you could also say this is equal to K2 
y, and obviously then k1 plus k2 should equal zero. You can go through this process as well, but I'm just gonna kinda get to, I think, the more difficult part here. So now we need to apply our boundary conditions. So when v equals zero, v equals zero when y equals zero. So if we move this down here, that tells you zero equals zero plus d, which means d must equal zero. So we can get rid of this term. We also know v equals zero when x equals zero. So if we look at that x term, zero is equal to a plus b, or b equals negative a. So we can rewrite our potential now as a e to the kx minus e to the minus kx. And then we're just going to have c sine of ky. And we know the potential is equal to 0 when y is equal to a. So when we do that, when we do that, we can see 0 equals sine of ky. I'm sorry, ka. We're now plugging in a. So that means ka should be equal to n pi, since n pi makes sine your sine part zero. Then k is equal to n pi over a. So just plugging this all in, I'm going to call all these constants we have just c. And actually, before we do that, I want to do one more thing. So if we look at this term here, I'm going to rewrite this. 2 hyperbolic sine of kx is equal to e to the kx minus e to the minus kx. Normally, you see this. So that's the definition of hyperbolic sine. But if you multiply both sides by 2, you get this. So I'm going to pull out all these. Well, I'll rewrite my potential. And all the constants, I'm just going to call it c sub n. So the 2, the a, the c, I'm just going to call it that. My exponentials, I'm going to replace with my hyperbolic sine. My k is n pi over a x sine of n pi over a y. So we have one more condition that we need to apply, and this is where things will get interesting. That's when x equals b, v equals some potential. So OK, we can just plug that in. v naught y equals c sub n hyperbolic sine of n pi b over a sine of n pi y over a. And we're going to sum all these up from n equals 1 to infinity, but that'll actually change the, well, because our goal is to find what our constant is. Now what we're going to do is what's known as the Fourier trick, and this is where I want to get into a good amount of detail. So basically what we're doing is we look at the left-hand side, and we're going to multiply it by sine of m pi y over a, and we're going to integrate from 0 to a. This is referred to as the Fourier trick. And then we're going to have the integral. We have to do that to both sides <clears throat> of our sum
And then again, we're going to have to still multiply by sine of m pi y over e. I called it m instead of n because we don't, it's not necessarily going to be the same integer as n. We'll find out what that integer is, though, here soon. So I'm going to focus on the right-hand side first, and I'm going to pull out anything that isn't related to y since it's a constant for all the integral cares. So if we do that, we'll get the sum of our constants. And then also the hyperbolic sign doesn't have any y dependence, so I can pull that out. The integral from 0 to a sine of n pi b over a sine of m pi I'm sorry, this is supposed to be a y, not b. That was for the other one. Okay. dy. So now we want to figure out what those integers are. So let's start by assuming the most likely case, which is that m and n are different numbers, different integer numbers. Well, if we use our product to sum identity, which says sine of angle alpha, times sine of angle beta, that's what we have, is equal to 1 half cosine of alpha minus beta minus cosine alpha plus beta. We can replace this in our integral. So if we do that, you'll get 1 half, I'm going to break this up into two integrals from 0 to a, cosine of pi y over a, and then I'm going to say n minus m dy minus the integral from 0 to a cosine of pi y over a n plus m, just following the equation, dy well, this is ultimately just an integer, and we can just call this whatever. Let's just say f and g, for example. What you're going to have now is, let's see, you'll have 1 over 2 pi f times a sine of f, oops, sine of f pi y over a, evaluated from 0 to a, minus the integral, uh, let's go ahead and do the integral actually, minus 1, it's the exact same, it's not any different, so 2 pi g times a sine of g pi y over a, evaluated from 0 to a. So I'm just calling those some integer, which they are. Well, notice what happens. So if we evaluate this integral, let's say we plug a in, you'll get sine of f pi or sine of g pi. Well, sine of an integer times pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, is 0. And obviously, sine of 0 is 0. So you end up getting that this whole thing is equal to 0 if n does not equal m. So let's try the other one, which would be if n equals m. Now you could actually do this uh, the exact same way as before. So the only difference is if we were to, we can still use our sum to difference formula. So the integral from 0 to a. So cosine of n minus m. So that's going to be cosine of 0 because they're the same value dy minus the integral from 0 to a cosine of alpha plus beta. So that'll be pi y over a times 2n dy. Now you can go through this. You'll end up still getting some integer value. It'll still be 0. But here, you'll get 1 half cosine of 0. That's 1. So you're really just integrating dy. 
So, and that'll just get you a. So a over 2 is what you get when n equals m. So that must be true. n must equal m. That's the only way we're going to get a potential. So now I'm just going to uh, essentially plug that into our equation. So if I go back up here, I'm going to replace this with n. Actually, I'm going to replace this with this whole thing here with a over 2. I'm going to replace that with n, since they're the exact same thing. So we have c sub n hyperbolic sine n pi b over a. That was out there times a over 2, the integral we just solved for, equals the integral from 0 to a v naught y times sine. And instead of n or m, I'm going to use n because they're equal. It doesn't matter which one I use, dy. Now, we can solve for the constant. So that will be 2 divided by a hyperbolic cosine of n pi b over a, the integral from 0 to a, v sub naught y times sine of n pi y over a dy. And then all we would do is plug this constant into our potential. So we would plug that into here. And that's really what we're looking for is the constant. Now I'm going to go ahead and do part b. And part b is just saying that that constant, or it's actually saying that potential is a constant. And I'm just going to solve that specific example. Because now this is v naught, and that can come outside our integral. So c sub n is going to be equal to 2 over a hyperbolic sine n pi b over a times v naught. And then we're going to have the integral from 0 to a of sine n pi y over a dy. So this is a pretty simple integral to solve. I'll go ahead and do it here, though. You'll get minus cosine n pi y over a times a over n pi evaluated from 0 to a. So that's minus a over n pi cosine. So if we plug in an a, that'll be n pi plus a over n pi cosine of 0. And we know cosine of 0 is just 1. So this will be, let's go ahead and just factor this out. I'll do it in my other color. A over n pi. So that's going to be 1 minus cosine of n pi. So cosine of n pi is just negative 1 to the n. So you have um, cosine of pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and all that's changing is the sine, right? And we want to start at negative, so we'll let n be that. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and plug this in. So c sub n equals 2 over a hyperbolic sine n pi b over a times v naught times a over n pi times so 1 1 minus negative 1 to the n you can see this a will drop now notice what happens if n is an even integer. So if n is an even integer, look what happens. If that's even, then this number is going to be positive, which means you get 1 minus 1, which is 0. So then your constant is equal to 0, which means your potential is equal to 0. Now if n is equal to an odd integer, 
then what happens is you'll get one minus a negative, which is plus one, because this odd number will keep it negative, and then this negative will make it positive. So you end up getting a two. So we want when n is an odd number. So when we do that, the two will turn this into a four, our v naught over n pi hyperbolic sine of n pi b over a. So there we go. There's our constant. Now what we're going to do is plug our constant into our potential. And that's the very last step. So now instead of it just being any number, it has to be an odd number. It's supposed to be a 5. So that infinite series there. 4 v naught over n pi hyperbolic sine n pi b over a times sine hyperbolic. So this was our constant. We still have our other hyperbolic uh, sine. That doesn't cancel. There's a slight x difference. I almost made that mistake. And then we have our sine out here. And that's your potential. If you wanted to, anything that doesn't have any independence, so 4 v naught over pi, you could factor that out. You don't have to. And that's your potential. A long problem. I'm going to probably try to do maybe a three-dimensional one and then maybe a spherical one and then hopefully move on to some uh, other material. But hopefully that helps people out a little.